Hey, what's happening guys? Michael, Evolution, Sean's here, Chili, hey guys. You guys good? Everybody well? Good with the return to summer. Yeah, it's warming up, right? It is warming up considerably here in the UK. Evolution, whereabouts are you based? Whereabouts are you from? Just gonna uh, zoom in here a little bit. Uh, two seconds. Zoom. Let's see you guys. Kent. Oh, nice. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's certainly. I, I felt it. I went out uh, for a little bit of a walk, and uh, it was like, whoa. Okay. Now we're cooking. All right. Um, yeah, so today, uh, hey, yes, Sean, how was my weekend? Um, it was pretty good, pretty good, good solid, seven or eight out of ten, and, and yours? <laughs> wow, bright top, ready for some top tunage, <laughs> thanks. Yes, we're gonna play a track today, and, um, and I'm gonna kind of leave it to you guys, which solo in the song, Afternoon Des, which solo in the song do we break down? It could be one, two, or three, depending on the difficulty that you want to go through. So um, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, in fact, we could even go a little bit further than that. We could go a little bit. We could go a step further. Um, I was thinking it would be good to break down Neon Skies. Now, we could go crazy, and we could even break down something like Square Dreams, if you want to go to the next level of Tongue Twister Licks. We could break down some solos from Times. There's a few that we could go with. So depending on your mood, is everybody in the mood for some Synth Wave Shred Breakdown or some New Beginnings Shred Breakdown? So it's a, it's a big decision right off the bat. I know we've just started streaming, so it's a big decision. <laughs> Uh, New Beginnings, uh, Square Dreams, for example, it's, um, oh, there's a lot of parts to it, but we could choose which ones we like. Um, but there's, there's lines like this. Anything from that to, like, very, very sort of, uh, I guess that, that section is slightly Van Halen, uh, Inspired, but uh, let's let's go with the original idea Because we're gonna need a warm-up here anyway And this track has a little bit of everything Some vibrato control some bending control and then right at the end it ramps up It ramps up into some heavy tapping shred Let's give it a shot Start off with some cleans. So we'll break down the solos for any of these tracks that you feel like. Let's uh... Gentle. Oh, wibble wobble. Gotta get warmed up. There's a lot of two fret fret bends in this track. Hey Jamie, what's up? Nice to see you, mate. There's a lot of, yeah, <clears throat> exactly that, DK Rift. We've got to really put all of the feels into that section. Go with a 
split sound on the Fishman Fluence. Here's the part that we could break down. Oh. Yeah, so that section is a complete tongue twister. And what's really interesting about that section, well, thank you, Mr. DK Rift, is um, it all just uses minor scales. There's no unusual note com... Well, the note combination, I guess, is unusual, but the scales and the key, everything is just completely C minor. And I'm not even throwing in any harmonic minor or anything like that, no chromatics, which I normally love doing. Um, so... So it's a fun solo, and there's a little bit of string skipping in there as well. So some quite interesting note choices. So with that solo, we've got the first solo, which is all about the phrasing. So maybe let's uh, let's go with the uh, the neon sky since it's loaded up here. And there's a nice bit of variety and stuff for people to sort of jam along to. How does that sound? Let's, uh, let's do that. All right. So what I'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the key, we'll go through all the licks. Good idea. I think we already went over the second section too, exactly. Exactly. I can't remember if it was the first or the second, but I don't think we got to the full on shred section. <laughs> I don't think we ever completed that one. So, um, be interesting. So I think it was the second one, wasn't it? So do you think, Sean, you play it. It was the second one. Did, we, we didn't do the first one, right? Cause that one actually is the hardest solo in a lot of ways. And in fact, uh, I'll tell you quickly, this used to be the opening song when we, uh, we did the Dragon Force tour. And um, one time I was just so full of adrenaline, I came in hard. Oh, and I just hit that note overbent and I just heard it pinging all around the, uh, oh, around the venue. I was like, all right, that's my cue. That's my cue just to settle down a little bit. I remember Herman Lee was ripping me afterwards. He's like, I heard the first bend. I'm like, mate, I heard the first bend, Herman. Okay. Maybe people were crying in the background. Oh, oh. All right, let's learn that first solo. Um, so what's really interesting about that solo is um, this particular part. <laughs> It leads right into an area of any key that I really enjoy playing. Uh, no, we're not gonna get Wonderwall happening today, that's for sure. <laughs> Unless it's a synthwave shred version of Wonderwall. So you see right here, we just passed the default minor position. Minor position is like right here. I love 
playing. In this position, almost as if you're playing the relative major. So C minor, three notes up, is the relative major. In this case, it would be D sharp major. So I'm not really thinking if it's minor or major. I'm just using the note choice because the notes are exactly the same. But I just really, really like that area. It's great for jumping in and out of pentatonic sound. And the minor sound. A little bit of pentatonic and chromatic action. So I, I really kind of like playing slightly above and slightly below uh, those positions. So the opening line for this solo, it's, it's again, it's all about that delivery. One, goes from the C to the D, to the two. First finger comes down to that G. And then we've got that bend with two and three. So the bend is obviously from the third, third finger, but the second is there to support it. And the first finger is coming over to give us that nice dampening. Now, here's a tricky part. We have to slide that whole bend away, seamless. And to do that, we're right on the volume knob. So as we slide away in the last split second, the volume comes in and it kills the, the guitar. Back up. So quite a nice interval jump there. Tony, uh, oof, I, I've never seen Tony today. Again, same technique, two and three, first finger's coming over, helping out. And then we go into the little slide section. Let's try again. So sliding with the first, oh, sorry, with the third finger, and then with the second finger, and then we're using that third finger again just to bend up a semitone. Let's put that together. Now this is usually the point in the song that you that you would get to, and suddenly you'd feel like your fingers are a little bit sticky or your guitar strings need a change. And this is the kind of reality check moment because as soon as you get to this point, you've already put a lot of um, sort of expression into the bends and stuff and you slide away. But this is the first test of like the guitar if the strings are nice and smooth because if it's not, well, you can kind of overshoot it, undershoot the slides and suddenly you're in a little bit of a, an awkward situation then. So, And then we kind of use that momentum to go up here. And this is an F note on the B string. And then we finish out with a little bit of extra reverb. Now notice how we crossed over there. Two comes above the first. And I do that a lot on my plane, crossing things over. You like that one, TK Rift? Yeah, I, I gotta have nice, soft, clean hands, yeah. Super clean hands, it makes all the difference. Cheers, everybody, as well. All right. So let's put that whole solo together.
And you notice how the little slide up there. Now that's gonna make your one and two feel quite stretched out. It's gonna feel a little bit unusual. Again, this kind of feeling you get used to very, very quick. Because we're sliding up to it. So if you just try it from the G sharp and then slide up to the G. It's a phrasing, you know, uh, contrast. I like that. Always wash hands before playing. Never want finger funk all over the fretboard. No cigarettes. That is exactly it. So, um, yeah, fun, fun solo. Let's rock it out to the track and see if we can all get it together in real time. We're gonna build a track up. You know, this is this is a good opportunity for us to have a <clears throat> tea or coffee on the side of the stage. Right now, the volume pot's down. Now it's on full, and for most of this, it will be on full. Slowly down. Out. Slide in slot. And then slowly fade it out. It's on about 40% with a split. Now that's kind of what I love about the Fishman Fluence is they're so versatile. With the same gain sound, we go to a split with about 30-40% volume and it's a totally different game. It's a different sound entirely. <laughs> and that's a sound or a tone that I use all the time. So full humbucker. <laughs> Really, really cool. Hit that split sound, 30, 40% on the volume part. An actual fact, the second solo of this song, which we covered previously. It really, really relies on that split sound, um, which Fishman Fluence just deliver so well for me. Um, so that's cool. So, hey Omar, welcome over on Facebook. Nice to see you, buddy. So let's push through. We're gonna go into the final song. So I'm gonna find the breakdown. Uh, we don't wanna play the whole song just to get to the breakdown, do we? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna play it first and then we'll come back to it and break it down. Get ourselves ready for the chugs. Brad, welcome, nice to see you. So there's quite a lot going on in that solo. It's it's a lot more intense. It's like the finale in the track, I guess. It's the final solo. And um, it all starts with that 
big chug. Gong, 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 gong. And as you guys know, I'm a massive fan of just those power chords with, with the extended fourth below. So that's exactly how, yeah, it's a big chug for sure. So that's exactly how we're gonna start. Now it all jumps in pretty, uh, pretty much from the get go with this solo. There's no kind of building up, it's straight to the action. A lot of my solos, they kind of, they ramp up and they sort of build, but this solo, it's straight in with the, the full shred. Um, it's not super quick, but it just requires a lot of flow and consistency. Uh, so it's a certain approach for this solo, for sure. So it all starts right here. Oh, death, yeah, 100%. So... <laughs> You hear right away, that's the note choice, right? It's very, yeah. Really, really like that note choice. So what I might do is I might just put a clean sound on for the breakdown here. There we go. So we do the chug. And then we begin. One and two on the B string, starting at that eighth fret. Now again, like we, we played around with earlier, we have to have that nice separation with one and two. A lot of people are gonna feel more comfortable initially spreading out like this, one, three, four. Yeah, but we're gonna kind of push it out to get that bigger, wider interval. So we're gonna go one. That's our opening line. Now, when, you, when you're going from a, a picking to a tapping uh, movement like that, as soon as you get that first note down on that E string, I'm gonna start moving that tap in pos into position. So it's one kind of movement. And then we go one, three. So let's put that together. And then we're gonna to have to use some hammer-ons out of nowhere to start descending some of this uh, lick. Now right there, I'm using a little bit of hybrid picking because we are going back to that E string. So, tap. with the third finger. Pulling off, hammer on. Hammer on out of nowhere in the B string. And then the hybrid picking comes in. And let's move on from there. And then start using a lot more hammer ons out of nowhere. Yeah. So you see um, Omar's very subtle when you actually do it. Yeah. So let's put the gain on so I get that feel. So it's the kind of position shift that gives us that little bit of a sort of tongue twister vibe. Two, one, slide down, and then go three, four, one. So we're kind of using the position shift to give us this extra note combination, which I kind of like because that way we're playing to the position shift's strengths in a lot of ways. And then we're gonna hammer on out of nowhere over to that D string. Ah, it's one of those things, it's such a twi uh, tongue twister, it's very tricky without the, without the tracks. I'm gonna play it just to that point. Yeah. 
So we're using this note again. And it's that kind of, that, that note from the minor scale, it's a sixth note in the minor scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's really kind of pronouncing that note. And it's, 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 it's that note that's gonna help us give us that almost oriental sort of vibe about it. So we're kind of just repeating a very similar pattern, an octave lower. And you hear that little bit of hybrid picking comes in again when we pluck that, that third string. So right there, we're just doing a kind of very similar pattern to what we did before where we're hammering on out of nowhere. So you can literally just try that single set of lines. All right, let's push on to the next uh, part of that. So then we start going back up in pitch. So one, two, one, three. And then that position shift into the same note. But that gives us that doubling up effect. Let's try it with a track. So then we start ascending up. So we'll go from one, three, one, two. I, I'm sure they will. <laughs> And again, we're playing off that sound, that specific sound for the solo. And that's when we start repeating that line a couple of times. Until we shift it up one, so. So if you just hold that and memorize that pattern. And then the next pattern is one, two, stretching up, going from that G to the G sharp. Yeah. So then we start to descend again, and that's when it gets a little bit trickier again, uh, because we start introduce some a little bit of string skipping uh, into that section. So let's just play to that point. See that? So this is the, the sort of the sort of changeover point. We've, we've gone through the tapping. So one time we go over to that from that D note to the F note to the G sharp, a very diminished sound. So let's put that together. And again, having to use that hybrid picking to reignite that last note. So it's a combination of hammer-ons out of nowhere with hybrid picking. 
hammer on, plug. And then just a little, simple little line. And then we jump into some sliding. So, yeah, a little bit of a tongue twister line coming up, I'm sorry guys, but here we go. Very, very, uh, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad to play. It's just memorizing the, the note combination. So we're starting off with a slide. And then G sharp to G. Hammer on, pull off. Hammer on out of nowhere, pull off, slide. And then we sweep. Complete tongue twister line to play, but uh, very, very fun. And again, you hear the same kind of techniques being used where we're using string skipping, hammer on out of nowhere, and a little bit of hybrid picking to reignite the high E string. So let's put that all together to that point. And then we just have this little bit of a change up where we slide up. Ah. ah! What is the line? There we go, it's that line. So we slide up. Start picking, alternate picking that D note. Now, it's kind of the same techniques as what we were doing before when we were descending, except this time we're doing it going up ascending. Now this pattern here would be very easy to learn if you know that it's based on the top end of a minor arpeggio. So once you have that shape down, it's going to be really, really helpful because there's a little fragment of that shape being used. All right, so let's go one more time from the very top, slow, and then we'll put it with a track, and then we'll uh, we'll take a break <laughs> and answer some questions. Very, very, uh, <laughs> very tricky. So let's try it one more time. 
with the uh, the track, and then we'll have a break. Yeah, it would really help if I played it somewhat in time. That would help a lot. In time and in key. We'll get there. Third time lucky. Maybe fourth time. I'm gonna go back a little bit further. There we go. Get the beat now. All right, this time, let's do it, guys. tight and then sliding away volume goes down and we are out we can go back to drinking tea putting background music on we're all good we're safe we're in the safe zone all right guys in time in key no jazz notes there we go that is it troll we did it <laughs> so is the hybrid picking notes there for a different tone to picking it um, it's to make it easier because we are bouncing at that point from the G string to the high E string so we either have a choice of heavily jumping with our right hand hey if I can save the energy I'm gonna do that every single time unless we need to I mean there's gonna be cases where we want to hear the attack we want that slam of the pick against the strings right um, but in this case it's not gonna make a difference tonally, so it's to make it easier. That's all it's there for, to make it easier. Yeah. It's one of those things, once you get the note combination, it all kind of starts to, it starts to kind of like click, section by section. And um, I know what it's like relearning solos because, um, those subtle details are what make it stand out. Yeah, I think so, Omar. It's like, it's, it's, it's like sometimes, are you gonna use vibrato? Are you not gonna do vibrato? When you, when you bend, are you gonna hold it straight and then slide away at the end? You know, those little details. Sounds like a winner. Thank you, Troll. Yeah, it's, it's a fun solo to play. It's probably one of my favorite solos, probably top three solos to play from the Riding Out album. I really enjoy it um, and I, I think it's because it's that sort of quirkiness it's not overly fast um, but you know that that requires that solo probably requires the most finger strength out of all the solos and what I'm what I mean by that is like for me you need more finger strength for solos like that because there's so much emphasis on a lot of the individual notes um, if, if you have like weak notes notes that don't really say or sing much then the solo is not going to say so much and it's all about the delivery and the quality of those notes you know so if we don't have a lot of finger strength to be able to hold on to those notes and really make them you know just extract everything out of them it's going to be very very difficult to make it sound musical especially with a quirky solo like that you know they they need even more help to make them sing you know, it's, a, it's an interesting one. I feel like um, if you guys haven't um, sort of played around with solos like that too much, getting the, the sort of finger strength on one and two, uh, especially splitting them out like this, so we have a fret between the string, uh, between the fingers, and getting used to that sort of stretch, that's gonna be really, really beneficial for learning to play that type of solo. Um, because it's going to be the first point that your fingers will crumble when you when you try to go for that solo in, in, in the real lives. Yeah. Yes. So, now, there we go. That's the, the third solo from Neon Skies. So maybe we can have a series out of this. Um, yeah. Uh, Jacob Collier, Flintstone solo. Hey, you're gonna have to ask J Jacob Collier to, to, to teach you that solo. I'm sure you will. 
Ah, man. So, any questions on that whole solo or in general? Oh. Crack. Oof. Did you hear that? That was a big crack from the uh, inside that shoulder blade. Crunch. One of my favorite places to crack. Cheers, guys. Will there be a backing track available for Neon Skies? Um, there should be already on everything. Um, but what you're looking for is riding out the instrumentals. Um, it's on Spotify, Apple Music. It should be on YouTube as well, I believe. Um, it's called riding out the instrumentals. Um, Spotify and, and stuff like that, you can't call your tracks back and track version and stuff like that. So the only kind of semi-logical thing we could call it was the instrumentals. So, <laughs> you know, interesting one though. Yeah. So uh, today I've been actually learning a lot of solos out myself. Um, I've been learning, uh, oh man, there's about, 14 very technical solos um, and if you're if you're gonna kind of try and get this neon skies uh, solo nailed I can completely sympathize sympathize with you because learning these other solos line by line it's it's it can be tricky um, who came up with the uh, the cover art uh, yeah well back when me and Hutch first started doing music together uh, we were both really, really into BMXing. I was actually, I was riding up and down all the t all the time outside my house, um, seeing how many bricks I could sort of uh, bunny hop over. Hutch was going to uh, the local uh, park and you know riding his bike and stuff, and he was getting to sort of um, riding up and down ramps. And then he got really worried that he was going to break his wrists and stuff, so I think he cooled it down a little bit. Um, so just kind of see, seemed like the, the logical thing to do. Get a few snaps, crossing bridges and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I went through like about a six month period where I was like, I'm, all right, I'm going to learn how to wheelie and I'm going to learn uh, to jump, you know, like five, six bricks or something. I got it to about three or four bricks I could bunny hop over. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool cover. Yeah, we were getting some strange looks. We shot a lot of actually additional pictures that day, which we still have as well somewhere. So. Oh, running around. Yeah, me. I, I can't play that track at all. I, I have it here. And I act well, I say I can't play it. I just, I never. I never really went back and relearned the solos for that one. I think it's an A sharp minor. That probably has something to do with it. Not too bad at first. And then um, in comes a solo. The solo doesn't kick in for a while on this one, so we could probably, you know, drop in some... Yeah, you know, kind of things. That's about as much as I can remember. So there's a... Something like that. Something like... It's that kind of vibe, right? Yeah. That's, that's just about as much as I can remember from that song. And that's probably why I never really play it. <laughs> but I should go back and learn those solos. It's a nice track to jam over.
Less so in the vocals in, but uh, on the other sort of track sections. I'm gonna have to go. one day I will I'll learn those tracks <laughs> it's a very chill track I, I, I actually quite like the track um, but yeah we, we never kind of put it into the live set and because we didn't put it into the live set then I didn't go back and learn the the, re the recorded versions but I do like the lines yeah there's a couple of tracks on that album that we really just didn't do much with um, Hutch never really liked uh, rising up that much as well the one that has the <laughs> You know, it has that really cool op line. I really like that in Rising Up, um, but Hutch doesn't like the, the, the sort of rest of the track, which I quite like the track. It's a nice track. Big, big interval jumps on that solo as well. So it's, a, it's a, another fun solo to, to kind of play. <laughs> What's up, Miner? Nice to see you, mate. How are you doing? Low bends is something that I also love doing in my play, and I don't see too many people kind of getting really into that. Really kind of like the A and the low E string. Nice to see you here, mate. How's it going? Yeah, if you're tuning in late, by the way, uh, we did a little bit of a breakdown. Well, a, a full breakdown of uh, an end solo from Neon Skies. And um, if you want after the streams ended, I'm sure you can skip back and kind of check that part out. Um, some interesting licks, some interesting phrasing. And the cool thing is it all just uses C minor and it's all down to the delivery, the, the no choice and all that stuff to really kind of give it the, the sort of vibe that it has. Um, and that's something I really, really like doing. It's a big part of my playing. It's just how to take standard no choice but really put the order together and make something sound uh, a little bit different a little bit unusual and then people always say hey what tuning are you in uh what's what what modes are you playing I'm like standard tuning c minor <laughs> it's like that's all it is so it's uh, quite interesting Yeah, so next things I'm gonna start playing around with this setup by the way. Um, I'm already thinking like some tweaks and stuff. Um, there's an additional output. Um, right now we're using the chord Cortex for the main sounds, um, Gojira for the secondary sound. <laughs> Um, I'll be on Twitch tonight. Uh, yeah, probably not a crazy stream because I'm 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 uh, kind of heading out on a 
um, a bit of a journey from tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, I will be streaming tonight for sure. Um, I say this every time. I'm gonna try and start a little bit early, earlier, so we don't finish too late. But certainly, um, Des will be on tonight. Yeah, we'll be uh, having fun, and um, yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be nice to see you there as well. So um, yeah, so we've got a nice mixture uh, using the Quad Cortex, and then we also have um, well, there's actually a secondary route going out at the moment. Yeah. Nah, it should be good. Nice, guys. Appreciate that. But, um... We're gonna start doing a... There's a sort of... There's a flurry of pedals en route. Um, and it'll be really nice to kind of isolate those pedals entirely from all of this rig. So when we're kind of sitting playing with the pedal, because we're gonna do it on stream and for, for YouTube as well. Um, it'll be good just to get, like, the, the complete vibe from the pedal. So we'll do that. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully in, in the next um, three, four days or so. Once I'm sorted out with this uh, video shoot, that'll be the next thing. Um, we'll get the top-down camera on, take a seat, start going through some. Uh... Yes, troll. Yeah, shredding the night away on Twitch. I know, right? That's what it's gonna be like. Uh, but yeah, it'll be good because that way. Well, we'll be able to have like all my main sounds from the Quad Cortex, and then we'll have a separate output going into the door using whatever Neural DSP plugins that we choose. And then we'll have another separate output, uh, which is currently being occupied um, on another platform uh, for another pedal. That can't be revealed yet, unfortunately, but it'll be, that one will be revealed soon. Um, that one sounds like this. That's a little bit blended in. Um, so that pedal, I'm sure, will be revealed soon. Um, but yeah, separate line again. So it's kind of like five, getting back to five lines going into the door. But it's, it's all, it's all going to mean for some pretty cool experiments. And you know me, anything to experiment with some uh, gear, I'm all, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I kind of go hot cold on the gear. I'm like, everything sounds great. No more tweaks. And then I start seeing like these new overdrive pedals. I'm like, oh, oof, oof, we need some of that. Quickly, quickly. Uh, so where are we at, guys? Um, yeah, about five minutes left or so. So if you have any questions um, about anything, gear, playing, donuts. Never have any, uh, enough questions about donuts. Let me know, let me know, we'll make it happen. Oh, man, I tell you, actually, you know what I'm really interested in? Um, a really great acoustic guitar. I need some good shouts for that. It's a good question. Um, do you know if I could add a humbucker Fishman set into a HSH guitar and then add any? Um, you, I tell you, if your guitar is HSH, you know, you should be fine. Now, I've got two examples um, 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 from my collection that are two different ways of approaching this situation. Let's turn down the music for a second. Um, so my blue RG, um, the one that has the crazy trem and it chokes out, that guitar was originally HSH and it came with passive pickups originally. And then um, I basically had it uh, changed over to the Fluence Tozen Abasi set with a five-way super switch. And so under, under the guitar here, it's actually routed as HSH, um, but then I put HH in it and then I had a custom pick guard made to hide the single coil because the splits, you know, on the fluent stuff, they sound so good anyway. So you don't always need to have HSH. But the red RG that, that I had out the other day on the stream that has the Fishman Classics in it, um, that is wired up with two Classics and one of the Fishman um, single coils and it is wired up with HSH. 
So that can also be done if you really want to use that split as well. Um, so there's, there's a couple of different ways you can kind of get that to happen. Both are totally fine. What are my favorite donuts? Oh, well, I'm gonna stick with a nice, simple, plain choice. I feel just keeping it simple. You know, every time people come come over with boxes of like Krispy Kreme and they have all the different you know flavors and stuff, you know, they're fine. But the original just works, doesn't it? You know. What are my favorite donuts? Yes, yeah, so ah, oh, dude, you guys both you both ask the same question, like letter for letter. So Sigla and Omar, synchronicity. Any news on the Loudon troll? To be honest with you, the Loudon thing, I'm gonna probably say I've had enough. You know, they've gone from like crazy lead times to they've got a guitar, the guitar's in Ireland, blah, 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 you know, what, whatever. And I'm like, okay, let's hold on because I want to put some really cool Fishman stuff in it. Um, but like, how, how long am I going to wait for a really good acoustic guitar? I'm kind of sick, so... Um, so I'm, I'm gonna start looking at some other brands for a nice acoustic guitar. I'll tell you what, what I saw uh, recently on the Kiesel stuff is a really nice nylon string. And I used to play Classic Girl, so... I have the Zeus acoustic and it's great, but I wanted something that... You know, it's a bigger acoustic and the whole idea was... It was gonna go to Fishman and Fishman were going to... Like put some profiles of the guitar mic'd up and save it to the pickup. And it would be like a really special like a guitar because that way we plug it in on the stream and it's like sounds amazing. Plug it in, but it sounds like it's mic'd up and stuff, a really cool thing. So um Yeah, Sigla, I know what you mean. Like my original album is a big guitar. And I would like something that was like a happy medium, you know? A little bit of a cutaway, you know, kind of mid-sized guitar. So um uh, Sean, no, the Abassi set does not come with a five-way. Um, you'd need to go on like all parts or something like that and order a five-way super switch. Generally, there's two different types. There's like a Grigsby one, which works fine. Um, and then there's the original Fender super five-way switch, which, which is in here. Super clunky. Yeah, I know, Troll. There's, you know, I, I don't know why, I, to be honest, I held on so long. Um, but yeah, they, they just seem to be like, just messing around too much. I'm, I'm kind of like, I just want a good acoustic guitar. And I, there's, there's so many good brands that make amazing. Yeah, exactly. Smaller, exactly. Like a Parlor. So yeah, Parlor would be a really nice size, you know? So yeah, the clicky one typically is the Fender Super 5-way switch. I, I think, Sean, yeah. Um, Hey Thomas, sorry, need to get my backside together. I missed loads. Yeah, well, Eric, we're gonna be we're gonna be shredding tonight. We're gonna be doing uh, shred club. Well, shred club chat. Uh, you know, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be. We're gonna have some hype, but we're gonna have some chat. We're gonna take a seat tonight. You know, Friday night shred club. The seat doesn't come out. No seats on Friday night shred club. Uh... But tonight, we're, we're, there's there's a couple of things that we need to sort out. So we're gonna we're gonna get it together on my Twitch channel tonight. Um, you know, um, troll. All of these options look really good. I think we need to maybe get some of those um, get some of those options in the Discord so we can talk about it. And, and I'll, I'll start messaging some of these guys because 100% we need to get some Fishman preamps into the thing. Um, and, and brands, you know, maybe like Taylor or something like that. Well, there might be amazing guitars, but I'm pretty sure that they use their own preamp systems exclusively. And I'm really, really keen to to get a, a really cool Fishman preamp into a guitar. Yeah, I know, I know how good these sound. And I've heard amazing things about the acoustic stuff, but it'd be great, you know, plug it in. It's an awesome sounding acoustic. I mean, I mean, I've been excited for like two years about this idea, so I just want to, I want to get that done. I'm excited for it. Never give up. I'll try. I'll try. We'll not give up until we have a nice acoustic guitar. Um, you know what? You know what? Troll, that's a great shout. That's a really good shout. Um, you know, I'm kind of chatting to some really, really big retailers in UK a deal with uh, the whole of Europe and UK. Um, and maybe as we'll get something from their line that they carry, you know, and we'll, 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 we'll do something like that. That 
that could be a good shout because that way via the the retailer maybe they could just send one from their stock make it so much easier wouldn't it so maybe that would work as well good options good options you see this is why uh, everybody should try live streaming you get all your life problems solved on live streaming now speaking of another life life problem i'm gonna get myself in a nice hot shower followed by a cold shower that's the old ticket and then i'm gonna get on with some work guys thank you everybody that's been hanging out today it's it's really really good to stream every monday on the fishman channels and um hope you enjoyed the lick breakdown i know we've got a, a bunch of guys over on uh on the uh the fishman uh twitch channel which is cool um yeah everybody really good to see you guys and uh, i'll be back on full shred mode tonight where we'll chat hang out maybe get more into this acoustic malarkey and see if we can figure that out and um, yeah it'll be great to see you guys there tonight as well so you guys have a wicked day wherever you are in the world and um, i'll see you real soon all right take care everybody cheers and uh goodbye <laughs>